Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Maya with Simply Bloom. I'm very tired today. Look at my under eye circles, but we are out in the garden bright and early. I notice when I start my day like this, I just, I feel so much better versus if I don't. So here we are. <laughs> today we are going to be planting a bunch of plants that I feel are really good for a cottage garden. Now, a lot of these plants are kind of like in between stages. There's a couple blooms left, but they really need to get cut back. And I thought about waiting to see if I could cut them back and get a couple more, like another flush before I plant these. But I'm just going to show you the few blooms they have and then get them in the ground so they can flush back beautifully the second time already planted. So there are so many plants great for a cottage garden. These are the ones that I have on hand that need to get planted. I actually have a few others that would be really good in a cottage garden setting, but I don't think I'll be able to get those planted today. So I'm just going to start, we'll start over here. I love foxglove. They are the most, one of the most cottagey feels ever. Oh, there's a little daddy, daddy long legs. I want to see if it says a variety on here. Uh, Camelot cream. Can you see? Camelot cream. And it says a beautiful creamy pale cream, I guess, just like the name. It's not quite white, but it's not yellow either. With those beautiful kind of purpley speckles in their throat. Very, very pretty. Now, foxglove, they are biannual, typically. Some of the Camelot series, like this one is, you'll get blooms your first year and second year, but traditionally, most foxgloves, you plant them by seed. The first year, they will just sprout and they'll make beautiful green foliage. And then the second year is when they bloom. And then after that, they're done. Typically, if you let them drop their seeds, they self-seed really, really easily. So if you let your supply self-seed and grow, then you should have blooms every year, which is what I'm gonna try to do because I love foxglove. Now, just a side note, they are very, very toxic to everything, um, but I have kids and animals and chickens and they've always left these alone. Like my, I don't, at least my kids, they're not gonna go out and just munch on something. <laughs> That looks like this, but just keep that in mind, highly toxic, so just be aware. Next behind that, this one's a little funky looking. I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, I might just clip those off, but this is a liatris. This is the cobalt liatris. I forgot, I didn't say any stats on the foxglove. This one gets 24 to 48 inches tall. 18 to 24 spacing zone four i live in zone three but foxglove they come back for me this is the cobalt liatris or a gay feather height 24 to 48 inches spacing 12 to 24 inches 40 below and they will get those beautiful purple spikes so this one has not yet bloomed yet this one's almost done but it's getting some others that are just going to open moving on over here these look a little they're struggling they're struggling they'll be fine though once i plant them and cut them back this is the violet riot salvia from proven winners it gets 22 to 24 inches tall um i just don't have a color like that in my garden i mean i have purples and i have pinks and I have blues but not this color and that is absolutely gorgeous Spacing uh, 20 to 24 inches, height I already said 22 to 24, zones 3 through 8, bloom late spring into early summer. And if you guys ever have proven winners, at the very bottom it says pairs with and it gives you suggestions of what you can put it by if you're really not quite sure. Oh, bearded iris, that's another great plant. Next one is also another salvia. This is the back to the fuchsia salvia, 22 to 24 inches tall. I have a bunch of this in my garden and I planted it with Glowmaster alliums in front and it was a glorious, glorious show. Uh, so my husband bought me more because he wants me to repeat that combination and I'm not sure 
it's actually right over there. You can kind of see the globe masters. Uh, they all need to get cut back. They're done blooming, but I don't know if I should plant more of the back to the fuchsia spirea over there with globe masters in front, or if I should do it somewhere else. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put those. And then last that I have today, and hopefully I'll get this all in the ground, but we will see. This is an ornamental onion. This is a millennium allium, and it is just about to bloom. I have a serendipity allium, again, about to bloom. Uh, so I'm excited to try this one. I honestly don't know how they compare to each other. I don't know if one gets smaller than the other, or, or I'm not sure. But this gets 12 to 15 inches tall, 12 to 15 inch spacing. Oh, that might be a big difference. This one says it's only hardy to 20 below. That's zone five. I don't know if that's gonna come back. <laughs> Shoot. I might wait to plant that one. Uh, Cause I bought a zone five once before on accident and I actually took the plant back. It's still in perfect condition. And I said, I didn't realize this was a zone five. Can I exchange it for something else? And they were like, oh, absolutely. So dang it. Okay, so that's probably the difference between serendipity and millennium because the serendipity, I think it's zone four. And that comes back for me in my zone three garden. This would be a stretch. So I'm gonna work on everything else. But if you live in a warmer zone, they, this would be beautiful in a cottage garden along with the serendipity that I already have. Actually, I just looked it up on Proven Winners. This is not Proven Winners. This is Vigoro uh, company that's from, but if you look it up on Proven Winners, it says this is hardy to zone four as well. So I'm just gonna plant it and see what happens. And if it doesn't survive, then we know. I have this cottage garden bed here that's really coming along. It does need to get kind of cut back because there's some things that are walled out like this, this salvia. I love this because there's like no blooms left on it, but the carex is that deep pink. So I could potentially leave it like this and it will always look like it's blooming, but I think I will cut it back, see if I can get a second flush. But I wanted to show you, I have foxglove on this side but I don't have any on the other side and it kind of wraps around in a circle around my rock garden. So I was thinking of putting the cream foxglove right kind of back there to have some foxglove on the back side. But look at this. Oh my gosh. Obsessed with foxglove. This is more of like a pure white. So hopefully Hopefully the cream on the other side won't like clash with that pure white.
All right, you guys, I got everything planted. I'm surprisingly happy. I didn't, for some reason, I didn't think I'd get everything planted this morning, um, but I did, and just in time. Because this little man woke up right when I was putting the last plant in the ground. Yes. You so excited to be outside? Huh? Hello. I thought I would bring him out with me while I do the grand tour and I have some watering to do because it is his favorite place to be is outside in a stroller. As I just push him along doing my little chores. So let me show you where everything went. So I ended up putting the fox glove right there. Now it might get hidden by the tiger lily that's right in front of it, but I feel like you should be able to see it from other angles depending on where you look. And I think it looks so pretty. Like I said, just fox glove screams cottage garden to me. I love it. And the next thing I planted was the uh, uh, liatris. Now it's kind of in a temporary spot. I plan on moving it, but it's going to be a few years until I do that. So there's the liatris. This blue spruce will eventually get 10 feet wide. So that means from center, it's gonna go out about five feet, which is right where that liatris is. However, I just kind of wanted to fill the hole and fill it with something to suppress the weeds, to make it look pretty, because it's gonna be several, several years. I mean, you can see the new growth on this and it's what, like two inches. So if it grows two inches every year, it's gonna be ages before it gets over here and i have this felix cruz oh i was gonna throw a bag of mulch here i forgot i have this felix cruz peony that i planted this spring and it looks horrible there's a little bit of milkweed growing up there it looks absolutely horrible i have no idea if it's gonna come back next spring or not we will see <laughs> hopefully it does but i planted a ton of peonies and this is the only one that really shriveled that bad, but we will see what happens. Hopefully it will pull through. So I'm going to add a bag of mulch there. I do the no dig, no till method, but right along here is where I put the violet salvia. I put kind of in a lazy drift all the way in front of the peony behind the Veronica. And then I still have the back and black sedum that I talked about as it two videos ago in my plants with black and purple foliage. I was debating on if I wanted to put it here or one other spot and I was kind of waiting for you guys to tell me it's 50-50 if I should put it here or in the other spot. But the more I have it here, the more I like it. <laughs> so I might put it here, um, but I'll ask my husband, he'll be the tiebreaker. He is the one that bought me these plants after all. But I think that'd be really pretty to have the black and then the bright violets that just kind of goes around here. Very pretty. And then directly behind that, I have this flower bed here where I added the back to the fuchsia salvia. And again, just kind of a lazy one, two, three, four, five, six right there. Now this bed has a lot of late summer, early fall interest with asters and echinacea, sedum, or sedum. Um, there's a couple lupin blooming right now. I have tulips in this bed in the spring, but I feel like it needed something. So all these salvia, the other ones in my garden were blooming so beautifully the last three weeks. So that will be kind of like a bridge gap between the two. Man loud plane and then right here i have two white lion shasta daisies i put the millennium ornamental onion right there i think i, don't know, I just needed that papa green i have the spilled wine wygelia right there i have some uh, dark geraniums right there and i just feel like that will kind of fill in the hole really pretty right there but that is it you guys thank you so much for watching like i said i'm sorry some of these were past their their bloom time a couple like the liatris was before their bloom time and the allium but i'm happy to have these in the ground and i think they will be a great addition 
to my flower beds. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.